Turn over to your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4. Good to have everybody tonight. Hey Amen. I'm getting hungry just smelling that stuff cooking back there. If you hadn't figured it out, we're having dinner after church. And, and the dinner after church is to celebrate my birthday. I mean, our birthday's in April. <laughs> Amen. We're, but we're having birthday dinners tonight. Remember, we started this last month. And we're having our, our first, this is actually our first Sunday night a birthday dinner for the month of April. So when you look at the April, and when you look at the cake, it says, Happy April Birthdays. Mine, mine just happens to be the last one in April, so it's special. Amen? So we're looking forward to that. May is coming up, so we'll have another one next, next month. Turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4, and verse number 1. Everybody there? Say amen. All right. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord. Now, isn't it funny how Paul refers to himself as a prisoner of the Lord? I refer to myself as a prisoner of the Lord, amen, because I am sold out to Him. I'm sold out to Jesus tonight. Is somebody in the house tonight sold out? Amen, amen. we're sold out. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. We've got to read that again. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of of the vocation wherewith you are called. Father, we thank you tonight for your word. Lord, I pray that this word will touch and pierce each heart tonight. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. And the church said, Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time, you might be seated if you care to. I, I tell you, I, I, I got a revelation this past week in Ephesians, and I started thinking, man, why ain't the church doing more? Why ain't we doing more? Why ain't we going more? Why ain't we doing this? Why ain't we learning this? Why don't we go do this? Why don't we get together? Why? You know what I'm talking about, everybody, amen? Why don't we go do more for the Lord? And then the Lord says to me, well, you're the teacher. I said, really? <laughs> Smack me right upside the head. Well, you're the teacher. They're going to do what you do. If you do nothing, you do nothing, they do nothing. You go help somebody, they go help somebody. You go visit the sick, they go visit the sick. You go to the hospital, they go to the hospital. You go to the next door neighbor, they go to the next door neighbor. You go and you go and you go and you go and you go. And I started thinking, well, God, I don't know how much more I can do, Lord. I'm going and I'm going and I'm going. You ain't going enough. Did you read that scripture? Somebody read that scripture again. You still have it open? Therefore, remember what Mitchell says about therefore? What's it there for? Okay, let's decipher this just a minute. Walk worthy of the vocation in which you are called. Not vacation, vocation. Walk worthy. Now, Sister Phyllis, has a, she has a unique situation. She's got kiddos she takes care of. And, and you know, you talk Sanger, they, they, everybody knows Sister Phyllis. If you got kids, they know who Sister Phyllis is. Now, if all of a sudden these little kids come home with blisters on their back, uh, huh, on their backside, what's going to happen? I'm going to jerk that kid out of there. Okay. Now, <laughs> when I was selling cars and somebody come in and bought a car from me, and I said, "Yeah, that motor sounds good, don't it?" <laughs> well, ain't nothing wrong with that motor. Little oil won't fix, right? <laughs> They're not going to buy that car. So you need to walk worthy in your vocation. So when you've been called to preach, walk worthy in your vocation. You've been called to preach, you've been called to teach, you've been called to teach Sunday school. Sister, I, I love listening to you. You don't know it, but I'm in here getting songs and stuff ready, and when you're preaching back, or she don't teach, she preaches. But when she's back there teaching Sunday school class, I'm blessed. I'm standing out here, and, I, and I, all I can hear is par. 
Anybody know what I'm talking about? Power of Jesus. Now, I say power, but she says power. And I know it's her. I don't have to wonder who it is. Dale, when I hear you back here and I'm sitting up here and I'm listening and I'm getting things together, I'm blessed when you're teaching Sunday school. Sister Jackie taught it this morning. So you didn't think I was listening, but I listened. I listened to you. And you know what really strikes me out is Dale Mullen always closes the door. <laughs> so I get over there and I'll listen anyway. Why? Because I am wanting to walk worthy of the vocation that Christ has put me in as being the pastor of Freedom Life Church. I want to make sure somebody ain't teaching junk. Is that okay? We have a curriculum we go by. We use the Assembly of God curriculum. There ain't nothing wrong with that. I've grown up on it. I've, you know, as a kid, we, it's what I've known. But that's what we teach by. And so I can pretty much trust the Assembly of God and 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 how they teach and how they put it together. So, and I know that the Assembly of God walks worthy of their vocation. So my vocation is the pastor of a church. My vocation to eat is a radio man for Ford. Amen. Somebody says, what do you do for a living? I said, I fix radios. Somebody said the other day, aren't you a pastor of a church? Yeah, but I like to eat. <laughs> so I fix radios. And so I walk worthy of my vocation. When I walk into the, any dealership, don't matter which one it is, they don't know whether I'm going to be preaching or fixing the radio today. Because I'm coming in and somebody's either getting blessed or the radio will get fixed. That's just the way it is. So I walk in, and they know when I'm there. I, I start making notes. You ever been to a Ranger game? Anybody ra Ranger game? What does that little guy say? Hi, dog. You know what he's carrying. How many of y'all been there? How many of y'all bought one of them hot dogs? And you walk through there, hot dog. You can hear him four rows over, hot dog. I walk in the back door playing old prayer time. People says, what is he doing now? He's done gone crazy. But I walk worthy of my vocation. I was called to preach, and I'm going to quit. <laughs> For years I ran from it, Brother Mike. Didn't want to preach. It just wasn't cool. If you ever preached and didn't want to, you know what I'm talking about. God, I don't want to do that. But now I walk worthy of my vocation. I walk worthy of my... Brother Mike, you walk worthy of your vocation. Somebody said, where's a good realtor in town? Well, there ain't but one in Sanger, and that's Tiffany. She walks worthy of her vocation. I mean, somebody says, I want to buy a house. Well, there ain't but one phone number to call. Here it is. Somebody says, I need a place to keep my kids. Well, <laughs> don't bring them to me. <laughs> but you walk worthy of your vocation. What does that mean? If somebody, <laughs> somebody sees you at Walmart like you was having church, you walking through there and you go over there and you, you're going to pick up your, your milk and they're just out of your brand, Borden. You know what I'm saying? But they got this this brand over he never heard of. I don't know how it could be different because it comes out of the same cow. But if it don't say Borden on it, you're mad. You don't have my milk. Some little old lady over there, that's that preacher. Amen. My wife, when we're playing softball, she always says, the shirt, Gary, the shirt. It says Freedom Life Church. Don't argue with them no more. The shirt. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> he almost had an episode two weeks ago. Man, he was all over the field. Looked like just running, just mad because we're getting beat like 75 to nothing. And... <laughs> And he's running around, he's putting the ball into play, and, and, and you know, I, I'm sure that you, and I know because I've been there, you got to catch the ball. <laughs> now, Brother John, he'll let them know. <laughs> he don't care who's out there. <laughs> Sister over here, <laughs> she ain't never played softball in her life, amen. She said, I want to come play ball. I said, okay. She said, I ain't scared until she gets up there to hit the ball. <laughs> Be worthy of your vocation. 
Amen. I've seen girls hit the ball. <laughs> Look like they play tennis. Amen. Giving it a tomahawk. And then this one comes out. She's got a big old helmet and a face mask on. And what do you got all that for? It's softball. <laughs> Smart. They're going to keep them teeth, right? Be worthy of your vocation. You're a painter. If you painted a striped ceiling, I wouldn't want it no more. Because they, they make a special can that has striped paint in it. You also guys that work with the <laughs> But you know, you do a good job. If you don't get the tape just right, and, 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 or you don't put a floor stuff on the floor and it falls. Prep work. When you paint a car, same, how many, how many has ever painted a car? There's a lot of work goes on to it before the paint goes on it. Amen? There's a lot of work in the house before you paint it. I had a carpenter come put me in the door one time. I said, well, where's the paint? He said, I'm not a painter. <laughs> That's something you learn, amen? Now you got to call the painter. The man done fixed the door. Now you got to call the painter to come paint it. Walk worthy of your vocation. You know, I look at houses when I drive by because I want to build a house for me and Tammy, our final days, right? Amen. Hey, I, <laughs> I don't want to move no more. But I got this house in mind. Now, all the guys are going to love me because it's like a log cabin, pretty woodwork, you know, it don't really need a dishwasher. <laughs> That's right. I'm the dishwasher, right? But but I got this house in mind. I li I'd like a big old nice, about a 2,000, 2,500 square foot cedar home. That's just what I want. Amen? I want that. Maybe put some rock on that flagstone on there on the side of it. Make it all look real nice and, you know, make it look rugged when you walk up. My wife says, yeesh. I took a picture of one that I really would like to, to mimic and like to make a model of it and put it in my place. And she said, that looks old. I said, Tammy, it's brand new. It ain't been up a month yet. She says, it looks old. So we got two different things going on. Amen? So we have to compromise. Well, in the Word of God, there is no compromise. You with me? There is no compromise. He died on the cross for your sins. Take it or leave it. That's the way it is. That's the way we have to present it. So we talk to people. Just like I talked this morning. When you go up to somebody at Walmart. and you, She thought I was going to dance with her this morning. I'm not going to pull her up out of her seat again. But you pull them up and you say, Hey, you need to get saved. How many people are going to run off? You might get popped on top of the head. But if you are worthy of your vocation. You with me? If you're worthy of your vocation. Now you do stuff at the city of Corinth that I wouldn't even have a clue. So when, when you have a problem, they call you. It might, you, know, you may have to clear out a gutter, you may have to fix a drain, or you may have to fix the water supply. I, I don't know. I've heard you talk about running machines and things like that. So you're worthy of your vocation. But we all need to be worthy of our vocation in Christ. Amen. Read that scripture again that the Apostle Paul had, had, had pinned down for us. Verse number 1, chapter 4. Verse number 1. That last word, wherewith you are called. You know, you could choose to be a Christian. Right? We're going to learn something. You can choose to be a Christian. You can choose to live your, right, your life right before God. You can choose to do good or you can choose to do, to do bad. But when you're called, you're called. Amen. That's it. I tried to run from it, Brother Bob. There ain't no running from it. I hid behind the drum cymbals. I hid behind the platforms. I hid behind the stages. But when He calls you, you're called. He's not going to change His mind, folk. You are called for a purpose. 
You are called for a purpose. You are called, Brother Brumley, to minister to somebody. You are Every one of us in this room are called. We are all called. So walk worthy in the vocation. What area have you been called to? What area? It may not be passion to church. It may not be preaching. It may not be doing anything else but mowing the yard out here, Brother Robert. Praise God. Brother Denton has a new set of standards. He says, Brother Robert just needs all the praise and glory he could get for going out there and mowing. Because that's a hard job. It's tough. Cleaning the church, you think it's easy. Singing ain't easy either, is it? Now, when you listen to Laura, it's pre it sounds pretty easy. Amen? When you listen to Sister Laura saying, boy, man, she does all the... You know. I'm like, man, that's pretty good stuff right there. That's the talk of the platform. Amen? And now she's turning all beet red right now. But, but you know what? She makes it look easy because she's worthy of what God has called her to do. She's worthy of the vocation that God has placed her in. He has placed her in, in, in the ministry of music. Amen. He has put her there and she has given all she can. She's given all she has and God has blessed her for it because people are being blessed. Amen. He didn't bless me with a good singing voice. He didn't bless me with a good singing voice. Amen. He blessed me to do what I can. And I do the very best I can. Amen. So be worthy of your vocation. I can remember as a young person, Sister Jimmy loading us up in the country squire wagon, taking us down to the nursing home. Amen. Young people and a guitar. Down to, the nurse, down to the nursing home. I knew three chords, G, C, and D. And if the minor had to come in there, I didn't know what that was. We just going to sing without it. And then people down there in the nursing home, they didn't have a clue. But we'll start singing, I'll fly away, oh glory. And they get over there, boy. And they, they, they ain't moved in a month. When they hear that the youth group from the Assembly of God Church at Cadane Corner is coming to town, when they're coming into their area and they're going to sing and they're going to play, boy, they get dressed up and they get down there and boy, they ain't moved and all of a sudden they'll start moving. Get that old foot stomping. Be worthy of your vocation. So when you look at Ephesians, how many of y'all went home and read any of it? I did. Read Ephesians. The Apostle Paul is teaching us how to walk, how to talk, how to minister, how to go in our bounds, in our areas. Amen? Brother John, you just bless my socks off. You do. Your son took them from me the other night, but you bless me. You know what I'm talking about. When you're out there at 9 o'clock at night, how, how young are you? 70, 72. 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night. Here's Brother John. He's got his shirt on, Freedom Life Church. On the back of it, he's got a big old zero and coach. And he's right out there. Blessing me. I hope when I'm 72, I'm out there at 10 o'clock at night. I hope I can see at the age of 72. Amen. Uh, and, and so it blesses my heart. And, and, and you walk in that role. And people respect you. The team respects him. He comes out and he's, and he's, he's coaching third base or, or first base. He says, come on, run. Just try running. <laughs> and we're talking about young people out there playing softball now. Steph, the I, yeah, I'm going to get off of that real fast. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But this morning we talked about the first three chapters. Anybody remember what I referred to the first three chapters of Ephesians 2? To a car, the motor, the transmission, the tires, the ignition, etc. It's kind of the, the owner's manual. Ephesians is kind of the owner's manual of a Christian, the first three chapters. Okay, the next three chapters or a road map, teaches you how to get from point A to point B, takes you from here to there, takes you from start to finish. So when you start reading in Ephesians, you'll start saying, oh yeah, that's what he's talking about. So it leads you there. Now in my line of work that I work on, these cars, people always want to have these navigation systems. 
And I don't know why they got a navigation system when they never leave the area that they're, that they're from, amen? But they got to have a navigation system to get from point A to point B when they was born there. I ain't figured that one out yet. But, but if they don't have that navigation, whoo, they'll come in and they'll, I could just watch them. Boy, they'll get all over the service advisor. Hey, this navigation don't work. Well, a radio guy will be here in a little bit. He'll fix it. I'll get in there and I'll figure it out. And it's all because they don't know how to use it. Amen? How many of you could sit down behind a navigation system in a car that you've never been in before? Probably not. Well, they got this car, they bought it, and they just think you're supposed to say whatever. And it, da, 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 da. And it does, but it gets jammed up sometimes because they're telling it to do too many things. And so they don't know how to use it. Nine times out of ten, the problems that I run across are user error. They don't know how to do it. They don't know how to do it. So you get in the car, and we had this one lady from Australia. She's trying to tell this car to go to Preston Road. And I said, okay, well, why wouldn't it go to Preston Road? She says, I don't know. This, this car won't go. It just won't go, mate. <laughs> I said, okay. I said, ma'am, has anybody ever told you that the navigation system probably don't understand you? <laughs> well, no, nobody's ever told me that before. I said, let me hear you say Preston. P, P Reston? <laughs> you wanted to go to a rest stop? No, P Reston? I said, they ain't ever going to hear you. You might as well stop the car and type it in. <laughs> Because it's not going to understand you. So nine times out of ten, it's always something to do with it don't understand you. In your Christian walk, we run into problems, run into situations, and we don't know how to handle it because we don't understand it. We don't understand it. We don't understand why a man... Why, why God would leave His throne and come down here as a man and give His life for you. We don't understand that. We can't comprehend that. We don't understand why He would... I wouldn't leave my throne. Amen? So we don't comprehend. We don't understand, Brother Bob. Why? Churches split. Problems happen. Situations come up, and it's all because of a misunderstanding most of the time. Amen? We built a church out in Aubrey. Tammy and I, where we were going to church there, and, and I didn't particularly like the color of chairs that the church chose. I was on the board, and I said, man, I don't like that green. That's just ugly. Well, don't say it in front of sister so-and-so. Why not? It's ugly. You learn your vocation. She thinks it's pretty. But I didn't like it. So I told the preacher, I don't like that color, but that's all right. I'm not going to be sitting in them most of the time. I'm going to be playing music. <laughs> Misunderstandings. Why things happen. So, as we study, I want you to study in Ephesians. I want you to read Ephesians. It's only six chapters long. I'm going to give you three points we're going to close. Ephesians has a lot to do with walking in the Spirit. It teaches you to walk in the Spirit. It speaks in reference to walking. Now you and I today, when we walk, we, we think of one thing, we walk. But when we walk in the Spirit, it's a whole nother realm. Oh, come on now. It's a whole nother realm. Amen. Yeah. When you walk in the Spirit and you walk in the sight of God and you walk in the Spirit and you live for the Spirit and you forget about the flesh and you forget about the junk and you walk in the Spirit, your life is going to change. I promise you. Because the more time you spend in the Spirit, the more time you spend walking in the Spirit, the more time that you're able to minister to somebody, the more time that you're able to touch somebody, the more time that you see somebody saved. Amen? You walk in the Spirit. Apostle Paul taught about that. 
And he taught the Ephesian church. He taught the Philippians. He taught the Colossians. He taught all these, these Pauline epistles that, that you've got to walk in the Spirit. Because if you think it's about you, you got another thing coming. Amen? So as we walk in the Spirit, things happen in the Spirit. that We don't understand. We don't comprehend it. Sister Deborah called me last Tuesday on the phone and boy, she was excited and, and I was working. I had the radio holding up like this and I had my screw gun like this and I had the phone up here. And she said, Brother Gary, the Lord wouldn't let us leave the house till about five minutes late and I know why now because there's a wreck right over here we would have been right in the middle of. You never know what's going to happen. And I've got this thing holding up my hand here and I'm fixing this thing and Glory. <laughs> I ain't going to tell you that. I'm just going to, I'm just going to talk. Amen. And I'm going to listen. And it, but, but it's when she got to the point, wow, that could have been us on that bridge. But you walk in the Spirit. I appreciate the messages you send me every day on my phone that I can stop and I can read those. Normally I don't read them while I drive. But I stop and I'll get to the to the church I'm going to, <laughs> to the dealership I'm going to. Might as well be church, amen. They all know me as a preacher there. And, and I'll stop and I'll read it. And I'll say, Glory to God, thank you. I needed that. Tiffany the other day, she says, Daddy, whose number is X, Y, Z, such and such and whatever? So I go through it. Tell me the number. Oh, it's Deborah. Oh, she sent me a thing. Okay, that's cool. I like it when I receive messages like that. I do. It's just inspiration, scripture, with a little thought, quick thought. I like that. So I walk in the Spirit, and I pray in the Spirit, and, and things happen. Just like your, your church at Walmart, amen? When you're walking in the Spirit, things are going to line up, and it's going to happen. Brother Mitchell talks about he was at the tennis court the other night, and he brought a friend to church with him off the tennis court, amen? Why? Because he walks in the Spirit. Sister referred to Brother Mitchell as being, you know, he, if we just had half his zeal, if we had just half this or, or half that. You know, you can. You can. Do what he does. Or as he would say, do what I do. Or do as I do. I could just hear Mitchell right now. Yep. In the morning, I get out my Bible and I read it. Sometimes we don't get to the Bible until we're halfway through the day. Amen? Sometimes we don't get to the Bible till oh, all of our problems, we, we done been hit. Why? Because we didn't get to our Bible first. I know I'm preaching to the choir, amen? Because all of us get to our Bible first every morning, right? So when you said that, sister, it just touched my heart. Because I know, I know what you're after and I know what you're seeking and we're all seeking that same walk and we all want to walk in the Spirit. Now, he's a little louder. Everybody, if you know Brother Mitchell, he can get loud. You can, I, you can hear him from here to the stop sign when he's on fire. Nine o'clock on Wednesday night, these people, they learn how to shut their door. But he comes out, Glory! Hallelujah! I mean, people just stand in here, boy, that guy's gone crazy. So we walk in the Spirit. How do we walk in the Spirit? We pray. Ooh, what a concept. We pray. We get on our knees. We get on our knees. I seen the sign at Full Gospel Church not too long ago. Somebody's knees were wore out from praying. Touch God from my knees. I don't remember what it said, but something similar to that. I'd like to have a sign we could put a new thing on there every week. Something new about God. Because most people that don't know never heard it. They don't know the gospel. Prayer driven church. Come in here Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. We, we prayed for an hour. We prayed for an hour down here. It got loud in here, didn't it, Laura? <laughs> you in here with Mitchell, it's going to get loud. Amen? So we prayed and we prayed and we prayed and we prayed and we prayed some more and we get to church and we, man, it's just wham. People say, boy, y'all got a spiritual church. No, we don't. We just pray. Somebody say, amen. We pray. 
Well, y'all got it going on. No, we ain't got nothing going on. We just pray. We thank God for everything that's going on here. We thank God for the people that we're ministered to. We thank God for the sick. We thank God for those that we can touch. We thank God that, that, we, that we're chosen to go help somebody. Yeah. Amen? So we pray. Spend time in prayer. My second point, the practice. I'm a musician. Cameron, the only way to get better is to practice, right? How'd you get to be the best football player on your team? Amen? You need to practice them drums so it drives your mom and daddy plumb crazy. <laughs> you think I'd be a funny, but I'm telling the truth. You need to play them drums till the neighbors start knocking on the door. We had to soundproof the garage when Tori was learning, didn't we, Tammy? We'd lock him up in that, in that garage, shut the door, and put foam up around the garage door so nobody could hear him. And then he moved on to something else. Practice of the Christian in his personal lifestyle. You ever known somebody that you go to church with? And there ain't none of those here. But you've gone to church with somebody that ain't the same person they are in church? I'm not going to call any names. But there's none here. Glory. But they're, 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 they're just a little bit different than what they are here. Or even in the business world. Boy, they're Christian. Boy, they're shouting glory right next to you. And you go try to buy a car from them. Man, and all you hear is blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I ain't going to buy no car from you. Amen? It's important to a Christian to do business with Christians. True Christians. I'd rather buy a car from somebody, Dakota. Brand new car salesman, man. Look at that guy. He's grinning from ear to ear. I just give Dakota a plug. <laughs> but, but, you know... You, 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 you respect somebody because you're standing next to them at church and you're singing hallelujah, hallelujah. And then you get them out somewhere. You're shocked. People shaking their heads. <laughs> Been there. Just a little different. Had a friend, boy, I mean, he'd he give a lot of money to the church and he done this and he done this and he done this and he done this. But then try to cheat somebody. That's not practicing good Christianity. Amen? So we need to step up our personal walk. Add just a little more. I never will forget the day Brother Robert and Sister Terry came to church. And Terry and Stephanie worked together at Point Bank. And, and Stephanie invited them to church. And, and Stephanie seen... Terry and Jason and they waved at each other and Terry drove back and came back and came visit our church for the first time. Now she takes care of our money. Amen. Isn't that strange how God works? And, and then Robert comes up to the church and he says, you know, he, he gets saved. He gets into the church and he says, I want to do this, this, and this. I says, okay, no problem. He says, I want to stop smoking. Forty years. And he stood right here. He says, I need help. I said, okay. I told him, I said, every time that you want to have an urge or a craving, read a scripture. Read a scripture. And I'm going to be praying for you. And I stood right, right here. And I laid hands on him. I said, in the name of Jesus, take this taste and this urge away. It's gone. Gone. I said, gone. Why did he do that? Why did he chill? I don't know why he chose me to help him pray over it. I don't know. Maybe it's because I take my vocation serious. Amen. I take it serious because I know where I used to be. My last point. The scripture we read this morning was 
Ephesians 6, 10 and 18 talking about the tools to help you withstand the wiles of the devil. I'm going to read it again. Praise the Lord. I'm almost done, I promise. <clears throat> Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with the truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Did you hear that? Praying in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So saints praying for other saints. Amen. So we need to pray for other. We need to pray. Cameron, that you don't have those, those whatever you want to call them anymore. That they're gone. Amen. You know why they were gone and why they've been gone so long? Because somebody had been praying. And, and, and we need to take a stand against the devil. Amen. And tell him that he ain't nothing because he ain't nothing but just what's on the bottom of my shoe. Amen. That's all he is. So we need to know who we are. Yeah. Do we know who we are? We are blood bought. We are child of the king we are we are a chosen generation a royal priesthood glory to god and that's who we are we're not whooped by the devil we whoop the devil amen we're not whipped by the demons we whip the demons we're not whipped by sin we whip the sin amen because we have the power to tread upon the serpents amen that's who we are we are bought by the blood of jesus christ now why are we going to stand around and say, oh, woe is me, here comes the devil again. No, that ain't who we are. Devil chasing, blood bought, child of the king. Amen. That's who I am. Devil chasing, blood bought, child of the king. Glory to God. Mm. The tools given by the Spirit were what we just read, but I'm going to give you two more. Prayer, prayer, somebody say amen, amen. prayer, prayer time, amen, walk down that aisle, walk through the middle of that shop, prayer time, there's old sweaty again, I'm glad he only comes Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, prayer time. And then here comes one guy you'd never know. You'd never know that Rusty would ever pray. And boy, he starts, when I walk through there, he starts gathering them up. Let's go pray. Now they got a guy that's praying in my place and I don't even have to do nothing. Amen. You make a difference, Brother Bob. You make a difference in the Walmart. You make a difference at the Walmart down there looking for the milk and the eggs. You make a difference when you walk through there. Amen. You know what these people need. How's the best way to get it across to them? Live it. Walk in the Spirit. Prayer. Prayer. <laughs> Spiritual assistance. When I wrote service at the dealership, can I help you? Somebody grab you out? You just stand there. Who's next? If you ever wrote service, you'll know what I'm talking about. Can I help you? Customers mad before they ever get to the dealership. Can I help you? Give me time to help you, okay? And you get through it. And you help people. 
had a doctor bring me a big old ice chest. Remember this time he brought me a big old ice chest with dry ice in it and filet me in y'all. Boy, I was like, whoo! I was nice of that doctor. Boy, I said, walked out. Nobody else could deal with him. But you know a doctor puts his britches on just like I do. <laughs> Amen? People always kidded me because I talked to a plumber and a doctor. The same. It didn't make no difference. He come in there and said, man, you fixed my car. I didn't touch nothing. I just knew what was wrong with it. He said, you took care of my car. I said, well, all right. He went down to the store, brought me a big old case full of filet mignon. Remember that, didn't he? Boy, we ate for a week. Man, it was good stuff. <laughs> but he brought that to me. He said, I just want to thank you. I said, that's better than any letter I ever got. <laughs> Amen. Prayer and spiritual assistance. How many of you ever asked Jesus to help you through something? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. All of us in here, amen. Prayer, spiritual assistance. The theme of the book of Ephesians is a relationship, watch this church, between our King, our soon coming King, and you. Our relationship between Jesus and the church. Everybody say, I'm the church. No matter where you go, the church is on two feet most of the time. Amen? You're the church. So it's a relationship, Brother Bob, that we have to have with Jesus. And Ephesians will teach you that relationship. It will teach you how to gain that relationship. Amen? I've studied this for a month. And I've been so excited about it. But we get into this whole thing of I'm whooped. I love what you always say. She says, don't. Don't, don't, don't admit that. And no certain, certain words. Amen. Amen. There you go. <clears throat> I love this lady. She tells it like it is. You possess it. You confess it, you possess it. I confess that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Amen? I confess that He brought me through what He brought me through. I confess that I give Him all the glory. I confess that He is my soon coming King. I confess that He's my Father. Amen? Amen. And I'm His child. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Would you stand with me? Prayer and spiritual assistance. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank You tonight, Lord, for Your Word. Lord, we thank You for your, your Son, Jesus, that died upon the cross for our sin. Lord, we thank You for the miracle after miracle after miracle that You've brought us through and that we've witnessed and that we've seen. And Lord, I thank You for, for everything that You've done in this church and in this house and in these people. Lord, I pray that right now, Lord, that You would touch and that You would minister to those that are sick, to those that are in need. Be with each and every one right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I claim total victory for every person in this house. I claim total victory for every person in this building tonight. If you're sick in your body and you need prayer, would you come? We're going to pray. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. If you're sick in your body... Would you come? We're going to pray for you. The Bible says in James chapter 5, Any among you sick, call the elders of the church. Brother Bob, Sister Judy, would you all come and help me pray for these that are sick this evening? Hallelujah. We still believe in the old-fashioned laying on of hands and, and, and anointing people, anointing the sick. And, and it says that they will recover. Amen? Hallelujah. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank You, Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that You would cover Brother Danny right now. Holy Spirit, I pray that You would touch him, that You would minister to him. This sickness, Lord, this pneumonia, Lord, that, that the doctors diagnosed him with, Lord Jesus, right now, we stand against that and we claim, Lord, that he's healed right now, totally healed from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. We give You all the praise and all the glory. 
And the church said, Amen. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we touch Sister Deborah right now. Lord, this hand, this wrist right now, Holy Spirit, that you will heal this. Lord, that you would heal her, Father, right now. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Robert, Lord, we just thank you for Brother Robert right now, Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that you would bless him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet, Lord, that you would just touch his body, that you would heal his body. Lord, you made this, but you know what's wrong. You know exactly everything that's there. And Lord, right now we stand upon your word. Your word says that by your stripes we're healed. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We claim these blood stains. Hallelujah. I claim the blood. I plead the blood. Oh, hallelujah. I declare and I decree that right now, Lord, that you touch her man. Father, you know exactly the, the situation that she's going through. Lord, you know the, what she's dealing with right now. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would give her the, the, the wisdom and the knowledge to know that, Lord, that all she has to do is stand up and say, Lord, I love you and I'll serve you and I'll continue to do what you called me to do. And Lord, I pray and I thank you and I just, Lord, I pray that you touch her. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. In the name of Jesus, these Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, we Lord, we praise you. Hallelujah. Lord, I want you to just, just touch his body. Just touch his mind right now. Total deliverance right now. Glory to God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Yes, Lord. For me. Hallelujah. For all my sin, my sickness, and my pain. When I need healing, I claim those precious blood stains. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you tonight. Lord, we just thank you tonight. Lord, we just thank you tonight. We just thank you. Lord, we just thank you. We praise you. Lord, that you would just touch me and minister to me. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord Jesus. My sickness and my pain. Need healing. I claim those precious blood stains. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we thank you tonight. Lord, we just praise you. Praise the Lord. Father, I pray that you touch Robert and Terry right now, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm, my sickness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What an awesome time we've had here tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Let's give Jesus a hand clap of praise tonight. Amen. Let's praise Him. Let's praise Him on our ten string instruments. Amen. Let's just lift up. Glory to God. Father, we thank You tonight. We praise You. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray that You would just minister to each and every one this week as we go our separate ways. Lord, continue to do the work that You've placed upon our hearts. Lord, help us to, to walk upright before you and walk in the Spirit before you. Lord, send us to help those that are in need. We thank you, Jesus. We give you the praise and the glory. And the church said, amen and amen. Praise the Lord.